The following program was sponsored by friends and partners of the Lift Up Jesus Ministry. Acts 4.12 tells us that salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to man by which we must be saved. And so I say to you today, don't take my hands or some other preacher's hands, but you've got to come and take the hand of Jesus Christ and acknowledge what He did for you on that cross, and He will lead you to heaven. Welcome to Lift Up Jesus. I'm Pastor Dudley Rutherford, and in Mark chapter 10, verse 17 through 27, we see a rich young ruler who runs up to Jesus and asks him a very important question. The young man came to the right person. He came to Jesus, and he came at the right time when he was young, and he came with the right attitude. He was humble, and he kneeled before the Lord, and then he asked the right question. He asked Jesus, what should I do to inherit eternal life? Have you ever asked that question? If you've ever wondered, then this is your moment. It's going to be a great message about examining our priorities. Are you ready to jump in? Grab your Bible, your notes, and a pen, and let's begin today's lesson entitled, One Thing to Prioritize. The Bible says, Jesus was once asked, what is the greatest commandment? And Jesus said that all the laws and all the prophets are summed up by two things. Number one, love God. Number two, love people. And the Ten Commandments, think about this, the first four, the vertical commandments, are summed up with the phrase, love God. And those six horizontal commandments are summed up by loving people. So the Ten Commandments and all the laws summed up, love God, love people. Jesus goes, and stay with me, you've got to put your thinking cap on. Jesus goes and says to this fella, "Uh, there's one thing you lack, go sell everything you have, give to the poor. And then come follow me. And the rich young ruler can't do it. And so he makes the wrong decision. And he says no. And he turns and he walks away. And so Jesus there is proving to the rich young ruler, one, that he doesn't love God because you're rejecting me and you're rejecting what I'm asking you to do. So you don't really love God if you're rejecting Jesus. And secondly, you can't say that you love people because you're unwilling to sell your possessions and give them to the poor, so you're guilty of not loving God, and you're guilty of not loving people. You're guilty of breaking all of the laws. And in verse 22, look at it, look at it, look at it. The man's faith, do you remember? He came running in, he's happy, He's, he's full of energy. He humbles himself. He's saying, I've kept all the laws. Jesus challenges him, and he walks away. Now his face has fallen. He goes away sad because he wants to keep money as his God. He chooses to reject Jesus. He chooses to keep his riches. He chooses not to have everlasting life. Write this down. Jesus always leaves the choice up to you he never forces you into serving him you are not a robot he didn't create you to be a robot he gave you the freedom to choose for yourself to either make jesus lord or to reject jesus as lord but it's one or the other and it's your choice The real problem is the young man wanted to serve God on his own terms where it cost him nothing. And that explains most Christians in America today, we will serve God if it's convenient for us. 
And the call of the Christian life is not simply to follow Jesus when it's convenient, but to follow Jesus at all times. Jesus said these words in Luke chapter 9, verse 23, if anyone wants to come after me, he must deny himself. He must take up his cross, which means you must be willing to die for the sake of God, take up your cross, and then you follow me. I heard about a car dealership. They listed a BMW on their website. They have this section called Buy It Now, and this BMW was listed. It sold in 10 minutes. It was listed mistakenly. The guy running the website made a mistake. It was listed for $1. (laughs) And someone happened to be online and snatched it up. The dealership recognized the mistake and still honored the sale. But I ask you, how many of you would like to buy a BMW for $1? How many of you would do that? Well, we would all do that. But if we acquire something of great value without any sacrifice, that's called a bargain. And we all want a good bargain. Who doesn't want a good bargain? Heaven is more than a good bargain. It cost God his one and only son. God gave up his one and only son. Jesus paid with his life. And then he turns to us and he says, if you want to follow me, you too must be willing to give up of your life, deny yourself, pick up your cross, and follow me. And so the question is, what have you ever given up to serve Christ? Jesus called his disciples to take up their cross. Anything less is not true discipleship. Anything less is an insult to the blood of Christ who gave everything so that you and I might be saved. Then we come finally to the young man's destiny. He went away sad because he had great wealth. And he turns his back on eternity with God because in his estimation, it cost too much. Think about that. That might be the saddest verse in the whole Bible. Because he was this close to being saved. He was this close. He was, think about this. He was this close to having all his sins forgiven. He was this close to having God be with him and never leave him or ever forsake him. He he was this close to being able to lay his pillow, his head on a pillow at night and not have his conscience worry him. He was this close to having true peace and true joy. He was this close to having true happiness in this life and in the life to come. He was this close to being an heir to the throne of Almighty God. He was this close to being called God's son. And he turns and he walks away. And I say to every person in this room, do not make that same mistake. Do not think the things of this world will bring you joy and peace and happiness because you can pursue them all the days of your life and you're going to wake up one day and realize these things do not bring me joy. They do not bring me happiness. And you're sacrificing this and the here and the now for what you could obtain everlasting life, being with God for all of eternity. Oh, you got to get this. First, it's impossible for a rich person or a poor one. It's impossible for a rich or a poor person to enter God's kingdom through merit. Jesus uses an analogy of a camel going through the eye of a needle. It was a literal needle and an eye of a needle, and he picks the largest animal in Israel, which is a camel. And let me see you get a camel. Th- that's, that, it's impossible for a rich man or a poor, poor man, for that matter, to get to heaven based on merit. I want to show you what I think are two of the most important vor- verses in this entire story, and most people just read right over them. So we're going to slow it down. I want you to look at verse 23. After this man walks away, 
Verse 23, we're going to look at every word. Jesus, the Bible says that he looked. Where? Where? I'm doing it. I said, think about this. This this dramatic scene with this guy. Jesus starts looking around. Someone said he was looking at his disciples. No, the Bible doesn't say he was looking at his disciples. The Bible says Jesus was looking around. He he spoke to the disciples, but he he was looking around. Now, what was he he looking at? What What was he looking around? What was he looking at? Well, one, I think he was watching that guy walk off. And don't forget, Jesus wanted him to be saved. But he had to touch on this issue of whatever was the God in that person's heart. And for him, it was material possessions. And so God, he dealt with it. Now, we wouldn't have done that. We would have, at the church, if someone here is rich and young and they're uh, in power and they come in, we'd we'd, kind of overlook some of their sins. And go, you come on, you're, you're welcome here. But Jesus touches the issue in this guy's heart. And so as he walks off, Jesus, Jesus is, is, is more sad than the guy who's walking away sad because Jesus knows what was really at stake there. And so as he looks around, he's looking around, I, I think he sees this guy walking away, and I think he's looking at the other rich people that might be walking by in that particular area. And he says to these guys, how hard it is. For the rich to enter the kingdom of God. Why? Because there's something about when you have acquired things, you start to trust in those things instead of fully trusting in God. And so he says how hard it is because he's heartbroken that this man's walking away. Now the next verse, I believe as I read through this, he then turns and looks at his disciples. And in verse 24, the disciples were amazed at his words and here's what I think was happening. I I think Jesus, as he was looking around, watched this guy walk off, and he goes, how hard it is for the rich. I think all the disciples are going, yeah, tell him, Jesus. Get, <laughs> tell him how hard it is. Yeah, that's hard. Look at that guy. But in verse 24, he then turns to his disciples, and he looks at them, and he says, children. These guys are dirt poor. They're fishermen. They're uneducated. They don't have a degree. They smell. They're filthy. Dirt poor. Jesus looking around, the rich guy said, how hard it is for the rich? And they're going, yeah, tell them how hard it is for the rich. That's not the way to be. And then Jesus turns to his disciples, and the Bible says he says the same thing, except it's not the exact same thing, but it is the same thing. He doesn't say, oh, children, how, 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 how hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. He just says, hey, he says, dear, ch- dear children, he says to them, the poor, he says, you need to know how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. Jesus is saying And wants all of us to know that you don't get to go to heaven based on being good or not being good. We all come to Jesus the same way. Bill Gates needs to come to Jesus the same way a homeless man needs to come to Jesus. A banker needs to come to Jesus the same way a bank robber needs to come to Jesus. The President of the United States needs to come to Jesus the same way a pauper needs to come to Jesus. A rich man, poor man, educated man, uneducated man, famous, not famous, strong, weak, teacher or a thief. There's only one way. You have to admit that you're a sinner in need of God's grace, that your riches and your wealth 
or your poverty, some people take pride in their poverty, that none of that will get you into heaven. You've got to get down on your knees. You have to humbly submit and surrender your life. Take every false god off the throne of your life and put Jesus and Jesus alone on the throne of your life. And that's why verse 26 says that the disciples were even more amazed. And they said to each other, well, who then can be saved? And Jesus looked at them and said, with man, it's impossible. In other words, no man can save himself. But with God, anybody can be saved. Even if you've broken every law that has ever been known to God or man, you say, well, I've broken so many laws, there's no way God could save someone like me. Oh, you're exactly who God can save if you're willing to come and put him on the throne of your life write this down quickly you've got to take jesus's hand and he'll take you to the promised land my last story this preacher he he witnesses all the time and he does this all the time he'll get involved and he'll say hey would you be willing to shake my hand Will you, will you be willing to shake my hand? Just take my hand. They say, oh, sure, I'll, I'll shake your hand. And then he puts both hands out and he goes, which one? What do you mean, which one? Well, if you take my right hand, it means that you've, you want to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you take my left hand, it means that you're rejecting Jesus and you don't want him to be the Lord of your life. But will you shake one of my two hands? Well, I, I, I don't, I don't want to shake, I, 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 I'm not, I don't really want to become a Christian, and I'm not really rejecting, I, I'm just not ready to make that decision. No, 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 you've got to shake one, of, you said that you would shake my hand, you shake, which one are you going to shake? If you shake my right hand, it means that you want to be saved. You want Jesus to be your Lord, it means that you want to go to heaven. It means you want your sins forgiven, you want the assurance of everlasting life. It means that you're going to uh, be a believer all the days of your life and follow Jesus Christ. And at the end of this life, you're going to get to go to heaven for all of eternity. Well, I'm not, I don't really want to become a Christian yet. Well, okay, then shake this hand. I, 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 well, if I shake this hand, it means that you don't want to go to heaven. It means that you are rejecting Christ. It means that you don't want your sins forgiven. It means that you do want to go to hell. It means that you do want to be in the lake of the fire and the lady go, whoever he's with. I don't want to do that. Well, then shake this hand. But I'm not ready to do that either. And he's trying to illustrate that by rejecting the very fact that you don't become a Christian, in essence, you are rejecting everything that it offers. And that there is no neutral ground, which is where most people are. They don't want to really fully commit, but they don't want to go to hell either. But you either accept and not to accept means to reject. You either confess and not to confess is to deny. There is no neutral ground. Isaiah tells us that Jesus' hands and feet were pierced for our transgressions, which means that he went to the cross and he died for your sins and mine. John chapter 20, he shows up to Doubting Thomas and he says, he shows after the death, burial, and resurrection, after Jesus dies, he shows Thomas, he says, Look at these hands. Look at these hands. Look at these hands. Because there's only one person who ever died on a cross for your sins. And it's the only way that any of us will ever get into heaven. Acts 4.12 tells us that salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to man by which we must be saved. And so I say to you today, 
don't take my hands or some other preacher's hands, but you've got to come and take the hand of Jesus Christ and acknowledge what He did for you on that cross. And He will lead you to heaven. You do know that God gives us the freedom to choose for ourselves either to make Jesus our Lord or to reject Jesus as our Lord. It's your choice. And if you've made a decision today to follow or recommit your life to Jesus, we want to hear about it. Call the number on the screen and we'll pray for you and talk to you about the next steps in your walk with the Lord. You can also share this message with a loved one by visiting our website, liftupjesus.com. And you click on the watch and listen up at the top, select Lift Up Jesus episodes from the drop down menu and you'll then be able to share the link. And while you're there, remember that your monthly financial support makes such a difference as we proclaim this message to potentially millions of people. And think about that. Millions of people, their lives can be transformed. Will you consider helping us? Please join me next week, same time, same place, as we continue our One Thing series. And until then, wherever, whatever you're doing or wherever you're going, don't forget to always lift up Jesus. We live in the most distracted culture in the history of the world. We see about 10,000 messages every day. We even touch our phones about 2,000 times a day. We're literally being overwhelmed with information. That's why there's no better time than right now for Dudley Rutherford's remarkable new book, One Thing, Rediscover a Simpler Faith in Our Complicated World. In this timely book, Pastor Dudley invites you to open your Bible and look closely at seven key passages of Scripture where you'll find the beautifully uncomplicated phrase, One Thing. These Scriptures will quiet all the noise that you're hearing and call you back to a simpler faith. Dudley Rutherford has discovered the secret of how to focus our lives on the one thing that matters. What if you could find that simplicity? It's waiting out there, and this is your roadmap to freedom. Contact Lift Up Jesus today and get your copy of One Thing, the book that could finally change everything. As you know, the name of our television broadcast and radio broadcast is to Lift Up Jesus. And our logo, many people don't realize this, but our logo is very intentional. You'll notice that there's an S which represents the Savior and it's a path because Jesus said that He's the only way. He's the way, the truth, and the life, and no one can come to the Father except through me. And so that S represents that Jesus is the only way to salvation. And then you notice the four colors, and we actually have this where you can download this if you go to our website, liftupjesus.com, and you'll notice, first of all, the red color, which the Bible says that we've all sinned and that the wages of sin is death, but the Bible also says that Jesus Christ died on that cross in our place. That red stands for the blood of Christ, that when He shed that blood, it was an atonement for our sins. The blue stands for your baptism, now some people don't understand this, but the Bible clearly teaches that every single believer in Jesus is supposed to be baptized. And we're to be baptized into His name, not the name of a church, not the name of, a, of an organization, but in the name of Jesus. And when you're baptized into His name, it's a commitment that you are serving Him. You're, going to, you're, going, you're willing to die and to live for Him for the rest of your life. And the Bible says that if you have repented and if you have confessed Him as your Lord, that you are to be baptized into His name. And of course, the green stands for after you come up out of that water, after you become a Christian, that every believer is supposed to continue to grow and to mature and become more like Jesus each and every day. The Bible says that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion, Philippians 1.6. And of course, the yellow stands for heaven. And the Bible tells us that one day that every believer from every tribe and every tongue from every nation, that one day we will gather together around the throne of God and we will worship the Lamb of God. 
God bless you and thank you for listening to this. Share it with as many people as you possibly can. And remember, whatever you're doing and wherever you're going to always lift up Jesus. As I look across this audience, I see miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle. And I want you to know, listen, that the world around us, the world around us right now, they are standing up and they are taking notice of what God is doing over here at Shepherd of the Hills Church. They are noticing. Hey, it's Pastor Dudley Rutherford here at Lift Up Jesus Radio and Television Ministry. And I wanna thank you for being a part of this ministry, listening here today. What you need is the Great Shepherd. And if you've got the Great Shepherd, you don't need anything else. Our desire is to take the gospel to the entire world, not just to your city and not just to your house, but to every city and to every house. And we know that we're living in those last days. The Lord has to come soon. There's just too much going on in the world for Him not to come. As you look back over 2020, I want to ask, has he not yet still protected you? Has he not still yet loved you and financed you and guarded you and cared for you and watched over you and forgiven you and kept you all of 2020? 20, has not yet God taken care of you? Don't ever, 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 ever give up that no matter what Satan throws at you, you just keep putting your hope in God. And I would tell you that right now with the current fears because of COVID-19 and with the use of our online services, that it is easier now to lead people to Jesus Christ than it's ever been before. We need people like you who believe in this ministry to come alongside us and to support us faithfully with their prayers, with their finances, with the word of mouth. You can share this on social media, but we need people like you who would seriously consider becoming a partner with us. It's just about lifting up Jesus, preaching the word in an uncompromising manner and have a chance to put their faith and trust in Jesus. Because what is needed most in the United States of America is the revival and the people of God turning their hearts back to an almighty God. That's what's needed most. The preceding program was sponsored by friends and partners of the Lift Up Jesus Ministry.